when administrative procedures can't be done face to face what often happens is that citizens because of how complex the use of certain websites is they just stop the process in the middle that's why we need to transform digitalization processes and to make it easier for people to navigate and use these websites so that people can successfully complete any digital procedure. In this new program of the series Outlooks on Public Participation in the framework of the collaboration agreement between UNED and the City Council of Madrid, the participatory group, both Marta Lora Tamayo and... Uh, Antonio López Peláez will interview Judith González, Clients Director for Clear Communications at Prodigioso Volcán, a company working for companies creating communication strategies and, uh, for instance, achieving user-friendly websites for easier procedures. Now, th welcome all of you to this new program of the participatory group. This is a cooperation agreement between UNED and the City Council of Madrid carried out for years. We have dozens of programs, workshops, all focusing on participation. Today, we are very lucky. First of all, we have with us the main character of this uh, show, the Professor of Administrative Law, She's always at our disposal, morning, afternoon, evening. Her name is Marta Lora Tamayo. Thank you, Antonio. We have just interviewed another participation expert talking about the art of seduction. So I thought I'd be nice to you today. This is Judith González, an expert from Prodigioso Volcán. She's an expert in communication strategies and participation in public administrations. Judith, thank you for being here with us. It's my pleasure to be your main course today. Exactly. Cocido from Madrid is like participation. It has many different ingredients. Anyway, let's get started. Tell us a bit about Prodigioso Volcán, your lines of work in the framework of public participation processes. Prodigioso Volcán is a transformation company. What we do is i mean we like to say that we have that journalistic dna that we are focused on the digital world and transforming administrations and companies in the digital world because we are aware of the digital challenges that they need to face in our specific lines of work i like to highlight our area or the whole department dedicated to clear communications which is a methodology that we have helped to develop we have established its foundations because we believe that communicating clearly can contribute to meet all challenges and targets faced by administrations like the sdgs or the uh, 2030 agenda i love the concept of clear communication because in this hyper communicated society we are sometimes in the blind with uh, regards to different stakeholders it's exactly not only are we in the dark but also i'd say antonio that uh, we are contributing to this darkness to this blindness because the way in which we digitalize in which we communicate and the way that we conceive processes make it more difficult for people these challenges cannot be always overcome when we're looking for information online and the exercise of the rights and duties we are working on clear communication because we believe that this is the guarantee that will allow people to exercise the right to understand the information that is relevant for their daily lives. We are really focused on guaranteeing this right to understand at Prodigioso Volcán. We have the clear communications methodology to assure them of it. You are right, because I'm in the administration world, I have to say mea culpa. I work specifically in urban planning and I could even say that we love that blindness, that we love the darkness of our own terminology that boosts our comfort zone, our own ego and lack of comprehension by citizens. 
I think that this project is fascinating, the way that clear communications can enhance participation processes. Let's go back to our previous interview. We were talking about good practices, but all of them have, as you were saying, that clear communication strategy for the project, which at the end of the day makes it a successful one or it makes it move forward because of that clarity in communication. But it's not easy to work on this. Let's uh, talk about these topics in order. It's true that sometimes in administrative law, like in any other discipline, there's jargon. So if there's terminology, it's a professional terminology, and we love it as professionals. We love to use these words. We rejoice in using these words. And we are not against a specialty or terminology. I'm a linguist, so when I talk to other linguists, I also use my specific terms. I love them. But the problem is when we are addressing a society, a citizenship that simply doesn't know these words, that's how we contribute to that darkness. In the same way as when we go to the doctor, we like them to talk clearly to us, to make it a bit easier for us to understand what's going on and how we can improve our situation. So what we need to do there is to build that bridge. I believe that building that bridge is fundamental to reach, to make it to the second stage, the one of public or citizen participation. The citizens are used to not understanding public administrations. We've told them that is it's what you can expect for it to be difficult to carry out administrative processes, for it to be extremely complex to figure out what can I, what documents do I need when dealing with uh, social security or city councils. So it's very hard for people voluntarily to participate when they are required to do so in these processes because carrying out our obligations is already a struggle. Exercising our rights is a struggle. Just take a look at the figures of the aid, the subsidies for electricity bills or the basic income. It's very hard. So can you even imagine how much effort you need to make to participate in these processes. So we need to put an end to this belief by citizens. Let's prove to them that we can make ourselves understood being as, as rigorous as the administrations require. But these public participation process should be participatory. Exactly. Mandatory administrative procedures should be as easy as possible. That happens to us. I was listening to you carefully. This is the part of the year where professors can ask for the publications of the past six years. And we're talking about people with PhDs, experts, and there's a friend who's doing it right now. And uh, he was missing a, a document. He left an app. And then when coming back, the whole thing was gone. All the information was erased. And it's like Mount Everest, you're wasting so much time on this process. So it's true that our relationship with administra the public administration is very difficult, but it has to do with the design of these processes to make people give up or to discourage users. Exactly. I don't think they're designed that way, but it's often the result. That's the key. We need to simplify processes. This is essential. At Prodigioso Volcan, every year we draft a report on communications by public administrations. Last year we focused precisely on digitalization processes. We analyzed 40 processes by public administrations, both at local, regional and national level. And then we carry out a survey of, among a population group to find challenges and we found the terrifying figured that 8 out of 10 people were having problems even to, to navigate the website. So often we are used to how things work in our day-to-day. -day. We know how we can buy on e-commerce sites. We learn how to use Google 
and other big search engines. So when we access public administration websites and the process is such so much of a hassle and uh, you don't know where to click for starters you don't even know the name of the process this is not intuitive normally we say i've been fined but later on the website you will hear other words like sanction files so when you look it up on google you just click on the first result please carry out this exercise look at the results that you're getting from search engines you can access in different information on several websites sometimes there's contradictory information depending on how you are accessing a process for instance to renew your european health card you need to authenticate with a electronic id and sometimes you don't have to use this process it really depends on the website that you're using to access the process and the so what i mean is that the challenges start before the process itself sometimes midway you need to attach information documents sometimes the files exceed size and as antonio as you were saying if halfway you have a question an inquiry these websites just erase all the information you had provided sometimes at the end of the process the website won't even tell you whether the process has been completed or not or what to expect if you will receive a email and notification by sms if you can forget about it if you need to do something else so this generates so many doubts on the people carrying out these processes we need a more humane digitalization i love to listen to you because i live this firsthand when we are talking about digital vulnerability we're thinking about people who are not digital savvy but i myself do not carry out many processes because it's extremely complex formally because i'm not well informed because i don't know how to do it judy thinking about all the audience that is listening to us i mean this radio show is broadcasted outside of spain please tell us about the key topics of your co clear communication strategy first of all we need to enhance language we need to realize that we can be just as accurate just as rigorous using a more straightforward language that is easier to understand this deserves a thorough assessment with experts philologists linguists there are so many in our country that we can work with secondly we can improve accessibility of websites this is an increasingly important challenge we are all vulnerable as people many know it we are in a situation of vulnerability because yes there are profiles w with a, an institutional vulnerability so to speak because of circumstances in people's lives but we can be vulnerable at a certain point all of us we all get nervous sometimes and this stops us from understanding things as easily as we would in other circumstances imagine when you receive a letter from treasury you don't even know what's going on you're you start shaking you get all tense before compared to before receiving the letter so we need to understand that circumstances define vulnerability so user friendliness and accessibility are key we need to work on design as well design is like language i mean it really enhances the appearance the layout the easiness to carry out in administrative processes user friendliness makes life easier for nine out of ten users so we need to transform digitalization processes in this direction it's true it's a huge challenge for certain administrations but doing it would lead to numerous advantages antonio think about the time we would save both people and administrations because every person who cannot exercise a right or carry out a process online needs to keep engaging with public administration civil servants have to have that communication hey you need to attach a document come to us face to face exactly everything that is not resolved just keeps getting bigger and bigger in social work i see this many city councils receive 
doubts from citizens and they're just desperate because they receive recurring very repetitive messages often you are reactive you cannot get in communicate with administrations as you want i would like to encourage all our listeners to think about this need for clarity and easiness because we are all involved exactly and we take for granted that this happens in the digital world but we would never agree to this face to face i want to make a comparison for you to reflect on it if nine out of ten people are not understanding a procedure we're talking about a huge problem if there's always a question a an inquiry coming up at a certain stage if our documents are not accessible if people cannot understand them i mean we could never create a ministry where nine out of ten people just can't find the door the problem lies in the building if there's a staircase and eight out of ten people trip over going up these stairs we might have to call an architect so this is the same thing but in the digital world accessibility is like this you need to take into account that often processes do not have the alternative to go face to face sometimes it is mandatory for citizens to interact digitally with administrations this happens in smes as well they need to they are required the similar demands compared to large companies but they do not have the means so we are forcing many citizens to deal with challenges that we could definitely mitigate or solve what a fascinating and interesting and beautiful work that you do i love that comparison with the real world sometimes we think that you can get get away with everything in the digital world but at the end of the day there's people behind if we think about uh, the participation arena this is fascinating the start of any public consultation that can be carried out in a large digital platform the way we use the language is key the way to access the platform is key for it to be appealing for people at home to want to answer questions by public administrations but if the question is unclear or not even the question if they don't even know how or where to find the question these public participation processes are always left in the hands of for quote-unquote experts who do understand about the process but not it's not open to everybody who's interested exactly we work on this a lot Uh, we have clear communications methodologies that think about cognitive bias and how much we can learn about behavior science when we carry out public consultations it's fundamental as you were saying marta it's because automatically when we look at something whether it's a document in paper it's digital process our brain decides very fast whether it's easy whether it's appealing or not easy or difficult let me give you another example if you look at a book that's 1000 pages long and if the font is small you think automatically this is difficult same thing happens with a website if instructions are clear on a website if the font has a reasonable size if you can, your eyes can rest because the paragraphs are short and if you can easily incorporate information that you're reading in your short term memory this is more appealing for you to read and we need to make people who are interacting with the content to want to participate we want to listen to them if what we are proposing to them is complex beforehand it's very hard for them to contribute to give their opinion to answer a survey to answer questions so presumption of complexity is fundamental as a factor to take into account i think about it a lot we don't only see this in administrative processes but also interaction some challenges stem from design i coordinated the robotic divide in springer a book uh, some years ago where the author was talking about digitalization making interaction more hierarchical and actually undermining 
interaction, so digitalization was less participatory. In this final part of the radio show, I'd like to ask you about the strategic pillars that you'd like to put on the table for local administrations. If you could highlight, based on your experience, some areas to improve, what would you say? I think that we need to always refer to the target audience, regardless of what, of what we are building, designing, constructing. Always think about who's going to interact, to read it, to use it, to use this thing that I'm creating. When you design something, thinking about the target audience, you do it so much better. Going back to what Marta was saying, when we are writing, we think about our own jargon, what sounds fancier, how can I prove how much I know. We all like to do this. When we act this way, we are focusing on ourselves, not on the person who's going to read it. We can apply the same thing to design, usability, user-friendliness. Think about the target audience. When I provide training, I always re recommend place pictures of different types of people on your PC. Think about them. Think about whether they would like, they would understand what they are reading, what they are seeing. That is the key that all the other pillars stem from. If we want people to participate, we need a clear image of what these people are like. Administrations know this. There are statistics, population data about whether they are children, seniors, ages, gender. You need to create an archetype and then Always keep this person in mind. I know it's a very easy recommendation, but if we applied it 100%, everything else would come naturally. And what does, where does this resistance to apply this suggestion come from? Why is communication still not clear? I think your reflection is brilliant, but it's tackling a problem that is already existing. There is a detachment a di lack of engagement on our citizens because of keeping them in that darkness. Yes, there's resistance, but we are really moving forward in this regard. In Prodigioso Volcan, we've spent more than 10 years designing communication projects for companies and uh, administrations, and we've seen the landscape evolve. Administrations are increasingly receptive and less scared it's true that uh, there's a legacy, we do things inherently the way we've always done them, and it's difficult to change. It's that ego that is present, that is a struggle to us, but it's essential that we change things top down, from the top down. It's so much easier for a new communication model to trickle down for civil servants, for instance, who have to complete files online or the small town halls to feel legitimized to carry out this change. Not that so that they don't feel or they're not scared to incur in a lack of compliance of their legal obligations from the top down. We could really break with this resistance and we need more training. If we've never explained to our civil service that they can do things differently. It's very hard that this will happen out of the blue. It's not going to happen. So we need more training. I think that resistance or the biggest fear that people have is losing that rigorousness that they say, no, but the law establishes that you need to do this this way. That's not true. In Roman law, we saw this. They said clarity in clarity, there's no space for interpretation. What does this mean? That when things are clear, when language is clear, there's no room for different interpretations. That's the best, ex the purest expression of a law. But all the different challenges, all the complexities lead to misunderstandings. I think that there's a fear. And I know this because I've worked hard for this not to be the case. Thank you, Judy. We cannot lose that accuracy. The clearer, the better. As Orteganga said, was saying, clarity is the courtesy of philosophers. So thank you very much for putting on the table throughout the show something that our audience needs. They have to refer to your website to understand the clear communication strategy of Prodigioso Volcan. Let's keep evolving. Let's participate better and smarter. Thank you very much, Judith, for being with us today. 
Thank you, Marta. Thank you, Antonio. It's been a true pleasure to share this time with you.